hello, this is Tony and Lois Evans. We're here at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship at our marriage conference where we're dealing with being rooted. You know, we want couples to be fulfilled, not with merely the fruit, but fruit coming from the right root so that they grow in love and in productivity and in commitment to Christ and in commitment to one another because the saga of a nation is the saga of its family. It's written large. Yes, we really want to help you as a church and as a couple to fight for your family. It's very, very important. And Pastor, you can give the scripture for that. Okay, Nehemiah 414. Okay, <laughs> that's what it's all about. We want you to fight for your family. It's just a beautiful thing. It does take hard work, does take time. And that's why when you said I do, you said I do for a lifetime. And we wanna be a part of that. You know, we're living in a day when families are being frayed and uh, the culture is not helping at all. That's why the church has got to prioritize biblical marriage, and we have to help couples mm -hmm. fight for their family yeah. and for their relationship. That's what we're committed to do here at Oakland Bible Fellowship, and that's why we're so excited about our marriage ministry here and our marriage conference. Tell me real quick, you talked about um, how you grew up yeah, and how that kind of informed you, some insecurities and yeah. things of that nature. What do you think was the major insecurity, the major nugget that you brought into the marriage that you didn't realize? So what I couldn't see because of I, what I had learned to do is this external persona that I had figured out. I had figured out how to manipulate my environment. Um, and what I mean by that is I learned early on at the dinner table, like if I can make my family laugh and if I can relieve some of this tension, then maybe dad won't be the hell out of anybody tonight. And my parents, instead of watching me do that and go, that's not right that he's doing that, went, oh goodness, this kid can save us. Mm -hmm. And so then all the weight of making things work was placed on me. Gosh, I was probably nine when yeah. I figured out how to do that. And so I had learned project strength, make it happen, manipulate your environment with your charisma, your charm, your, but inside I'm insecure and I'm just waiting to be rejected and if you're looking for rejection everything will look like rejection so the preaching and leading is this intuitive thing that God gave me so in that space man everybody's always like oh my gosh now you got the one crazy dude at church that's always emailing you about something but but by and large and if that's you stop that stop just stop it but the, <laughs> is, that, is that too much? Is that no, too I real? Love it. Okay. I love it. Um, so like that was a space and this is what made marriage difficult. Like, man, when I'm leading, like everybody's like, man, I'll follow you to the gates of hell, brother. Where are we going? And then I get home and just Lauren's like indifferent or, you know, it wasn't even that she was indifferent. Again, this is all about my brokenness. Like in my mind, if I called her cell phone and she didn't answer in my mind, she would look like, oh man, I ain't talking to him. But that's not what was happening. It was just like her her phone was in her car or something, you know, but I'm, I'm seeing that as she hates me. I knew it. And then I'm going to come home and be pouty about it. So like, what in the world's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. Right. So that's how it's playing itself out. So I just picked up, I am not valuable enough to love. I am not valuable enough to celebrate. I am not valuable. So there are all sorts of things like, man, I, you know, I, I played ball, not like you doc. So I ain't trying to, no, and, not quite, and, not, I ain't not trying quite, to yeah. friends on the yeah. resume right now. Uh, but like that, that's a space where like my, like my, my dad didn't know how to engage with that. Like he's not coming to games. He's not. So even in my wins early in life, my, my father was not there to celebrate any of that or to speak life into that. Yeah. He yeah. was, uh, I've, I've said it this way at the village. He, he was incapable of loving me. Like I love my son. He just couldn't do it. And I'm not like, I'm not resentful. Like I'm, I honestly have a lot of compassion for him. Yeah. Like he's, he can't do it because of his own brokenness. But that's what it sowed into me. Um, man, I, yeah, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be rejected. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing truly good about me. So, so I'm operating behind this facade of strength, but, but internally. And, and I had built the system in such a way that you couldn't hurt me, but you can't build that at home, right? If she can't hurt me, then I can't experience love by her either. And so to try to defend means I'm not just defending against the bad, but I'm defending against the good. Yeah. And, and so to be able to walk in vulnerability, just knowing like no one on earth could emotionally destroy me like this woman can. 
And it's worth being vulnerable so that I might experience the intimacy and oneness with what her that, that God's designed us to walk in, right? I so love that, it. That's kind of how I it's played it. out. Yeah. Real quick, Lauren. Yeah. Um, Lauren, you mentioned um, just the need and the importance of, as a wife, differentiate, differentiating yourself from your husband, especially if you have a husband that is a strong leader. Yeah. Um, what would you say is a good first step for someone who feels like they need to do that, but they don't know how to start doing that for how themselves? To start doing that. Um, I think for me, it was a community of women um, that we studied. We did a Bible study together, and uh, the woman that led it actually asked really intrusive questions that were helpful, like intrusive questions about me and about Matt, but I knew it was a safe place. So I think for women to find uh, other women that they know it's a safe place where um, they'll ask intrusive questions um, and not so that they can hold something against you, but that so you can start, ex you know, expressing what's going on in your heart and they can push back on that in a good way and they can shine light, the light of truth on that and to know you and to pray for you. So for me, it was um, community with women that weren't afraid to ask hard questions um, and that loved me and cared for me and prayed with me and loved Matt too. So it wasn't a let's beat up on Matt. It was, oh man, um, well, let me ask you a question about this. And it made me really have to think about the why I was doing certain things. So that's part of, of what helped me differentiate myself was that community. So if there's a place you can have that kind of intimate community that's safe, that's a great place to start. Absolutely. Great. When when iron sharpens iron, that's yeah. when sparks fly. Yeah. That's it. That's when sparks fly. Y'all give it up one more time for Matt and Lauren Chandler. Thank them for coming to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship and sharing the word. <laughs>